This lesson is on special polar equations and graphs. And so we've been working with polar coordinates and looking at the different kinds of equations. And we looked at some basic graphs, but these are ones that are a little more complicated and have a little bit more interest to them. Um, so the first one we're going to look at is a rose. And that's just the name of it, but it can look different ways. And obviously it kind of gets its name because they kind of look like flowers. Um, so here are some examples. And the equation for a rose looks like this. Either r equals some number times the sine of some number times theta, or r equals some number times the cosine of another number times theta. Um, the a and the n are just standing for plain numbers. But the n actually can tell us how many petals the rose will have. And so if the n is an odd number, it will have that exact number. For example, here you have n equals 3, you have 3 petals. n equals 5, you have 5 petals. But if the n is an even number, you will have twice that many petals. So when n was 2, we had 4 petals. When n was 4, we have 8 petals. And so that's kind of how that works. Um, the next one is a circle, which um, we already looked at, um, and it can be generated um, uh, from using r equals a number times the cosine of theta, or r equals a number times the sine of theta as well. So um, that, again, basic um, equation, and that's how it should graph. The next one is a lemniscate. And um, these kind of like remind me of little infinity signs. They can be horizontal, vertical, on a diagonal. But their equation is a little bit different because it starts with an r squared. And so we have r squared equals a number squared times the sine of 2 theta or r squared equals a number squared times the cosine of 2 theta. Then we have a uh, some people say lima cone, some people say lima son. And so these kind of look like a little bean to me. And so I think it looks like a lima bean, and that's how I associate the two. Um, but anyway, it's uh, it can have a little dimple. It can have a straight part. Um, it can uh, loop back in on itself. And um, if it looks kind of like a heart, it can be called a cardioid. So the cardioid is the uh, special version of this. And then we have the spiral of Archimedes, um, a spiral graph. Um, this is kind of complicated. Sometimes they end up a lot more simple with the ones that we deal with. But its uh, equation is easier to identify because it's just r equals a number times theta. And so these are all the types that we're going to look at for right now. Um, and so we uh, want to be able to graph these in polar mode on our calculator and we want to be able to identify them using the equation. So um, let's practice identifying some of these using our um, equations. So pause and then decide what each one of these five equations is and um, using the equations and you can also practice graphing if you need to and then I have a few more that we'll try. Um, so let's start with these five. Okay so looking at these five hopefully you got these right. The first one and the last one were um, the rows. Uh, the second one easy to identify is the spiral. When you have the r squared that's your lemniscate. And then when you have R and a number plus or minus there, that's your uh, lima cone, lima son. So with the rows, let's think about those for just a second. How many petals would this one have if the N is 2? So since this is a 2, you would have 4 petals because with even numbers, you double it. And then number 5, since this one has a 3, it has exactly that many. So it has 3 petals. Okay, um, let's try a few more. Um, this is important that you be able to uh, get these right. So here are our problems 6 through 11. Um, again, you need to identify which type these are, and if it's a rose, give us how many petals. So now hit pause. 
Okay, now check your answers. Uh, number six, four times the cosine of theta would just be a circle. It obviously looks like a rose formula with an n of one. So you can kind of think of it as the same thing because obviously a rose with n equals one petal is just one petal, um, which is a circle. So uh, six is a circle because of that, and 11 is a circle because, again, it's like a rose, but the n is one. Then, again, the limousin is easy to rep uh, recognize because it always has a plus or a minus. So the 7 and the 10 have that plus, so those are limousons. The limnoscate always has the r squared, so that one's easy. And then the spiral uh, doesn't have any sines or cosines, it's just 3 times theta. Now, before we move on, let's practice graphing these in your calculator. So I'm um, going to do... 10. 10 looks like a good one. Um, when you're on your calculator, you want to change your mode um, to radians. So go to the mode button. Uh, make sure you're in radians for what we're doing right now, anyway. And um, go to polar mode. And so that will be the third one over on the fourth line down, the P-O-L. You want to make sure you're in polar mode. Now when you hit Y equals, you will see R's instead of Y's, and when you hit your X button, you will see a theta that comes up. So let's go ahead and type in number 10, 2 plus 4 sine theta. And before you graph, let's check your window. Because we're in radians, I'm going to set my theta min at 0 and my theta max at 2 pi, and I'm just going to leave the t theta step alone. I'm going to go with that standard window for my x's and y's and say my x min is negative 10 and my x max is 10, my y min is negative 10 and my y max is 10, just to see what happens, and I may have to change that. So once you have it typed in and you've checked your window, graph. And this one does come out to be a pretty nice um, limousine, looks, um, has a little inner loop there and kind of looks like a little black eyed pea almost. So um, that one did a good graph on my screen. If you didn't get that, raise your hand, call me over. Let's do, um, let's do number eight. This one, because it's R squared, you can't put in squared in our calculators. So you'll have to do the square root of four cosine two theta and the negative square root of 4 cosine 2 theta as uh, two separate equations. And so go back to your y equals button and um, you'll now see the r's again and type in 4 cosine 2 theta and excuse me the square root of 4 cosine 2 theta and the negative square root of 4 cosine 2 theta. And um, when you graph those, it kind of has to struggle to connect the dots. But um, even without changing our window, you can see that it is a limnoscate. It is that little infinity-looking sign. Um, so that's pretty much what you need to do. It's just that sometimes you may have to change your window, change those x mins and x maxes and y mins and y max to see these in your calculator. Now, let's move on to some other things that you're going to be expected to do um, on your final exam. Um, your conic sections that we, we studied, ellipses, hyperbolas, and parabolas, all of those um, can be graphed in polar form. Um, the equation will look like this. It's a fraction. There's a number on top um, and a number plus or minus something times sine or cosine. So you can quickly identify, because it has the fraction, that it's going to be a conic. And so um, I have uh, these three right here. You can't really tell which one it's going to be till you graph it. So I want you to graph these in your calculator and um, use everything that we just talked about. Polar mode, um, be in radians, and you may have to change the window and decide what shape uh, conic these three are. So pause. Okay, so I got ellipse, hyperbola, and ellipse. I will tell you that I had to investigate that last one a little bit and go um, a little bit smaller of a window to see um, whether it was an ellipse or a circle because it was kind of fat looking. 
Um, but after I investigated and I've considered the radius, um, what it would be, it kind of counted and determined that it was a little longer on the X, Y side of things, or excuse me, on the X side of things than it was on the Y side of things. So it's kind of a horizontal ellipse. I will tell you with the hyperbolas, you probably noticed that your calculator drew in what looked like a big fat X. It's drawing in the asymptotes that aren't really there. So if all you can see on your window is a big fat X, it's a hyperbola. They're just drawing in the asymptotes and the graph is very close to it. Um, your calculator for some reason in this mode likes to like to connect things that that don't necessarily connect so um, just go by the basic look to the shape um, and you should be able to identify those all right now that you have looked at the equations what they look like looked at how to graph it in your calculator and by the way if you were struggling with a calculator again call me over and I will help you figure out what you're doing um, I have a few more of those if you want to practice, pause and practice. Um, I'll go ahead and put those answers up and um, you can use it for practice if you want. So I got these when I graphed on my calculator. Uh, 15 was a hyperbola, 16 a parabola, 17 a hyperbola, and 18 a parabola. Um, again, if you have questions about what you see, call me over. Now, I have given you a polar art project and you're going to have to create your plots of these graphs and one of the requirements is that you um, make a table of values um, for your graph and do your graph um, to complete your project so uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to do that this graph has degrees so I'm going to go ahead and change my calculator back to degree mode and I'm just plugging in here. It's easier when I look at this equation to plug in different values of theta. And so I have all these. I'm going to go up by what you're supposed to on your uh, project. So I'm going to go up by 30. So I'm going to do 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180, uh, 210, 240, 270, 300, 330, and 360. And I'm going to find out what the R is in each of those cases. And so um, I'm going to plug in 30. So 3 times the cosine of 2 times 30. And then plug in 60. So 3 times the cosine of 2 times 60 and then 90 and so on. So if you'll give me a minute, um, I'm going to pause so they'll appear on your screen. Okay, so now we have a list of all of our points. And again, I chose that by picking my theta in increments of 30, plugging that into my equation and getting these out. And now you're just going to plot these points um, in order and connect them, like connect the dots. Um, and it should graph this um, rows for us. Now, I'm going to say that the blue um, radius, radii are in increments of 1. So I'd have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 radiuses here. And the little gray ones, I'm going to say, are the halves. So that'll make it a little easier on me. All right, I'm going to change to a different color so we can see. Um, at 30 degrees, I'm at 1.5. So I should be on the gray line. And at 60 degrees, I am at negative 1.5, so I will flip over. And um, at 90 degrees, I'm at negative 3, so that will be the third blue line, but flipped. At 120. I'm at negative 1.5, so flip again. And then at 150 degrees, I'm at 1.5, so I don't have to flip that time. And some of these are disappearing on me. Um, and then um, at 180, I'm at 3. At 210, 
I'm at 1.5. At 240, I'm at negative 1.5, so it goes to the other side. And um, at 270, I'm at negative 3. At 300, I'm at negative 1.5. And that one wants to disappear on me. And 330, I'm at 1.5. And at 360, I'm at 3. And so knowing that this is supposed to be a rose, you can see the petals form from your points. So that's what we're expecting you to do with those graphs in that polar art project of yours. Um, and, and if you'll take the time to um, come up with you know, those nice shapes and work with them a little bit, maybe graph them in your calculator first to know what they're supposed to look like, it will help when you make those tables. So you'll have to have three of those incorporated in your picture. Um, and that concludes this lesson.